돼지 족발? 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 돼지 I've been all over Jeju Island, planning a visit at least a few times every year since living in Korea. But nothing could prepare me for the absolutely insane and delicious itinerary we took on our most recent trip to Jeju Island. We have an amazing special episode. We've never done an episode like this before. The Jeju Food and Wine Festival invited us to take a one week journey through some of the best local restaurants and cafes on the island. Each of these restaurants is being promoted for the Jeju Food and Wine Festival Gourmet Week. Courtney and I are so excited to be a part of this project. I can't wait to see where we go today. Along our journey, we discovered some surprising hidden gems while sampling some of the best, well-established matjip in the region. This is an episode of Eating What Is Given that I am so happy to share with you. We drove up the mountain a short distance out of the city to visit our first matjip, a Dubu specialty restaurant called Sudadur. As we arrived at the inconspicuous restaurant, a man on a motorbike mentioned for us to follow him. Suddenly, we found ourselves in the middle of a soybean field, learning everything about this special soybean plant species grown only in the volcanic soil of Jeju Island. Wow, we are in the middle of a kong field picking kong yip. We're gonna go take it back to the restaurant and eat our sambap with the kong yip. Chongtae kong, or Jeju purung kong, is a special species of soybeans. Ah, this is a flower? Got? Yeah. So, kong got. Kong, yeah. Ah, chomba sayo. Chomba sayo. You don't go to momo kong. What, mashi sayo? Mashi. Yeah. Denjang ina. Oh, dan mat. <laughs> sweet, a little sweet. And in the summertime, the broad leaves of the plant can be picked and eaten as sanchu in a variety of dishes. This was my first time ever tasting this incredibly rich and buttery Jeju soybean. Do not use any kind of pesticide or chemical on this on these products. So you're gonna eat like pure, healthy, organic soybeans here. It's so amazing to be able to see the farm. And I think they pick the kong yip every day to bring to the restaurant for the meal. So I asked the Sajang Nim if he has some JP. And he said, oh, there's JP right over here. As you guys know, I've been on a quest to learn more about JP, which is a Jeju herb. Wow, he's gonna show us. I could tell that this Sajang Nim had an intense passion for his ingredients. And with great pride, he told us to take as much as we wanted from his abundant field. We just ate some delicious kong yip at the kong yip nong the farm. And now we're gonna go try the kong at the restaurant. It looks like uh, the dubu looks amazing. Some uh, gochugaru, maybe soup. I think this might be soup. And then Jejudo doechigoki. Wow. Kong? So this is the kongguk? Yeah, kongguk. Kong wow, yongo chareho. Yongo chareho. This is a kongguk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. 
we're gonna try it with the Akka. Akka Sengsonggui. Very famous Jeju fish. Ooh, the fish is really nice. We're gonna have so much dynamic flavors. So we're gonna have the spicy dubudu jigi with the, the kongguk, which is gonna be very clean. Yeah. All right, the fish is really good, isn't it? This muchim, super vinegary, strong shikto, but man, that's a good flavor. They have a gosari jangachi. I've never had this before. This is really new for me. Wow, that's a very interesting flavor. Gosari Changachi? Chincha Oh, chincha? Ah. Alright, so let's try the Sengubu. This is what they're famous for. We saw the Kong Nung Cha here. Wow. It's really pure soybean taste. Actually, I don't know if I've had like soybean flavor like that before. The banchan here is amazing. They have fried dubu in cham in durgiram. Durgiram dubu. Here we go. Mm. Ma'am. You know, sometimes like really good dubu tastes like a little bit like cheese, like a really, really mild cheese. We have to eat mm. a couple mm. more times today. Oh my god. That pork is amazing. It's almost got like a farmy taste. Mmm. Definitely handmade kimchi. So good. So nice. Yeah, you don't usually see mm -mm. this red pepper. Mm -mm. You don't usually see that very often. My mouth is full of that spiciness, so I'm really excited to try this kongguk. Looks like there's just cabbage, onions, and kong. Looks so clear and simple. So nice. It's just really simple cabbage and dubu. It works as a palate cleanser. But there's dubu? carrot. There's carrots. That's amazing. Which JJ is pretty famous for carrots. So and those are really good carrots. Yeah. Onion. Mushroom. Spices. I think it looks like soup, but I don't know. Oh man. I love doing the wraps with the it's my first time ever. Mm. Now, this, this is amazing. Jeju Island is home to countless beautiful cafes, which are also featured on the Jeju Food and Wine Festival Gourmet Week. Courtney and I stopped just outside of Jeju City for coffee at Cafe Windstone, a cafe and bookstore offering delicious hand drip coffee at a great price. Another beautiful cafe on Jeju Island. <laughs> Mm. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice latte. Yeah, this place is really beautiful. Um, uh, there's so many amazing cafes on Jeju, but I really like the bookstore here. Um, there's a lot of like local books. Um, the artwork is really pretty. 
I'm excited to try it. This is gonna be awesome, I can tell already. Oh. Coffee and cake. Wow, hello. Hey, garden. Oh, you just mean outdoor. Outdoor. And the outdoor seating looks beautiful. And they've got beautiful, relaxing music. Great. You got a bookstore. Good coffee. Good dessert. I love Jeju. I love Jeju so much. For our next stop, we headed east to Songsan, where a small hidden gem called Wilala is serving up world-class British fish and chips. This place is actually a personal favorite of ours, so we were so excited when we heard that they would be featured by the Jeju Food and Wine Festival. After taking that first incredibly crunchy bite of deep fried fish, the concept becomes a little bit mind-blowing. The two guys running this tiny shop take their craft seriously, having been certified by the National Federation of Fish Fryers. It was established in 1913. That's a long time. And throughout its long history has worked toward protecting and promoting the interests of the UK's fish fryers. Rare techniques and trade secrets are employed here, including the use of a traditional Korean steel drum to keep the oil evenly heated. You can choose between Jeju-san, Jandori, or shark meat, both of which offer perfectly flaky and delicious white meat. Courtney and I decided to try their sampler set, as well as a glass of Jeju Wit Ale to wash it all down. Dude, it looks so crispy. So crispy. All right, so actually here is the two pieces of shark. These are the two pieces of Jeju Jondori. Uh, dargoki. Jeju dargoki. And we also get some fried shrimp and also some fried mozzarella sticks. So here's the moment of truth, guys. I'm gonna go for the Jeju Jondori first. And you gotta listen to the sound. This is what makes really good fish and chips the crispiness. Oh, it's perfect. See, it's like the flaky um, fish and the perfectly crispy crust. And it's not greasy, it's not oily. And that's what like a lot of fish and chips place can't do. It takes skill to do that. It's like some of the crispiest. It's not greasy yeah. at all. This is the magic sauce. You gotta get the London Pub malt vinegar. This is what makes fish and chips legitimate. I love malt vinegar on my fish and chips. Vinegar and fried food go together so well. Ooh, it's so crispy. All right, actually, we, I've never had their shrimp. Look at the size of the shrimp. It's huge, huge shrimp. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna do some of the tartar sauce on the shrimp. Wow. It's gonna be so crispy. No. It's so good. I'm gonna do the shark meat. So this could be like fish and chips version of Jaysabab. <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was a dumb joke. They use shark meat for Jaysabab. All right, so we got deep fried shark meat. Mm. Actually, the shark meat is a little dense, more dense. <clears throat> it makes for a nice, it's a different texture. Like the dargoki is a little flakier and lighter. If you like fish and chips, this is good. Hands down, that's the end of it. It's perfect. So crispy. This is Place Camp Jeju, the one hotel that Courtney and I stay in every time we visit Jeju Island. The 
The hotel surrounds a courtyard that is always hosting interesting activities. One of the best coffee shops on Jeju Island and a late night cocktail bar called Spinning Wolf. All right, guys. So we're at Spinning Wolf. This is a part of Place Camp Jeju. Actually, Courtney and I come here every time we go to Jeju Island. This restaurant's open until 1 a.m. So we always park our car. We're tired from traveling. We order some pub food. We order some drinks, and it's just perfect. The perfect uh, combination. First of all, for the drinks, we got a frozen daiquiri, which looks absolutely beautiful. Dried tangerines in it. And it's like full to overflowing, <laughs> so you're getting money is worth. The what was it called? It was like the Cuba Libre or something, yeah. which is gonna be like a basic twist on a rum and coke. It's nice. It's nice and tart, lots of rum, that's good. And then their famous uh, wolf fried chicken. The kind of food you're getting here is basically drinking food. It's gonna be perfect for, the, for a snack with some alcohol. Mmm! It's basically like sunsa fried chicken, but it's got a nice sweet glaze on it. It's good. You know, you want to get a, a nice cocktail or a nice glass of beer, get the fried chicken for a snack. It's a really great place on Jeju, um, on the east side of Jeju. If you're over here, I suggest take, stopping by, maybe even staying at place for a night. It's really cheap, budget friendly, but it's still a four star hotel. It's great. Man, that chicken is the bomb. So far, so good. In the hands of our Jeju Food and Wine Festival contact, I knew we'd be having a good time on Jeju, like always. But nothing, absolutely nothing could have prepared us for the final meal of the day. I wasn't expecting it. This isn't like a no coma chip. This isn't, this is a hidden gem. It's like Michelin chef, Michelin chef. So we heard we were going to a suljip to eat suljip food. I thought, sounds good enough. The place is called Dukobi, something about toads. Anyway, let's film it, get back to place for some sleep. We have a big day tomorrow. But Tugobi would become one of my favorite matchip in Korea, in a meal that I think I will never forget for the rest of my life. Guys, like this is like Pocha food on another level. We have hoktoeji jokba, and there's little matcha powder. We have it, like some kimchi, but it, everything smells so intense and so delicious. Fried eggplant. And it's so cool, we're like sitting at these vintage style tables, but they're, Courtney said there's like a metal reinforcing it to like raise up the level. We're gonna get some soju. Of course, Jeju Halasan soju. And what are you drinking? Courtney's drinking more Jeju with ale beer. Okay, I'm gonna go for the jokba first. Matcha powder on Kukbeji jokba. That's really good. I'm gonna try the fried. This is deep fried eggplant. Ooh, that jokba has a really strong flavor at the end. It's amazing. That, that is special. Super spicy. A little bit vinegary, garlicky, soy. Courtney, you're gonna love that. And then there's some kimchi, but it looks... There's daechu in it. 
daechu and the kimchi. I've never done that before. Mm. Summertime, we got tomatoes, cucumbers, a little bit of dubu. This is awesome. It's really delicious. It's really delicious. Yeah, wow, it's so good. Tukkobi jongbul dukkiyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got tukkobi uh, jongbul, which is going to be sokopchang jongbul. Perfect soju anju. It's going to be good. Fried eggplant is incredible. It's like they took very traditional and familiar Korean anju. And just like elevated it a little bit. It's like special. This is like a really, I would come here every time I come to Jeju, I'm gonna wanna like drink here, you know? And it feels, honestly, this place feels like the Sajang Nim has real passion for food. Like, not just food, but passion for making a place with an atmosphere that's fun. And yeah, you can feel there's personality in this place and in the food. Really? Wow, nice. Dodok Joyo. Gochujang mix. Okay, nice. So, Dodok Buchin. Dodok Buchin. Wow. Alasan Dodok Buchin. Wow. Ari on top. And then some paprika, pepper, which I've noticed is in a lot of Jeju traditional foods this time. And then here we got the. Let's try it. <laughs> wow. I'm instantly hit. Instantly hit with like just very familiar Korean taste. There's shikcho, chamgirum, and lots of spicy. Um, gochugaru, but the shikcho goes away very quickly and what you're left with is the taste of the ingredients, the taste of the vegetables. This is amazing. Actually, rami nari and bori, bori seeds, chambori. Wow, it almost looks like wamegi. If you see, mmm. Oh, chincha? Ah, sounds good. Wow, wow, that sounds awesome. Okay, look at the rice. High quality rice for sure. I think like I think she's like Michelin star chef or something. Oh, okay. guys. Mm. Wow. It's got a deep rich taste. A little bit of like a bulma. Mmm, the dodo. Oh, this is gonna sound crazy. This dodo kimchi. We taste it. It tastes like banana. It tastes slightly fermented in a yeasty, sweet way. It's a little bit sweet. Man, that would be killer with makgeolli. Unbelievable. This fish. Uh, when you take it with, like she said, with the green tea. It's just unlike any food I've ever had. And when you mix it with the nokcha, wow. Mm. The nokcha like kind of complements the salty the salty fish so well. This is 
uh, top three restaurants in Korea for me. And I think the biggest thing is I wasn't expecting it. This is beautiful food and it's got so much. Day one is done. My head is spinning from the incredible food and memories of the day. I can't wait to see what the Jeju Food and Wine Festival people have in store for us 